We all know about SQLite, the lightweight embedded relational database that is the world's most used database engine. But right now it has a huge limitation because it only allows one write at a time, blocking any other writes until that one is done, which means it can't be used for large data ingestion for things like financial trading apps or huge multiplayer games. Luckily, Telesto have solved this problem by using an approach from Microsoft and rewriting the whole of SQLite in Rust. Let's find out more. And before we do, don't forget to hit subscribe subscribe. Before we dive into the main topic, let's go through why Terso chose to rewrite the whole of SQLite, because even though it's a fully open source project, the SQLite maintainers don't allow external contributions to prevent contamination, whatever that means. So LibSQL, a fork of SQLite, was created to build a community for updating the database and included features like replicas, a server, official clients, and Terso, the same company behind LibSQL, offered hosted versions of it. But LibSQL was attached to an old architecture with a test suite that isn't publicly available. So early this year, the team chose to rewrite SQLite in Rust with async IO support, a WASM version to run in the browser, vector indexing, and multi-version concurrency control, or MVCC for short, which is the ability to handle multiple writers. Something SQLite doesn't have, that bottlenecks its performance. But let's give SQLite some credit. It does have an experimental feature called begin concurrence, which doesn't lock the database until the commit phase in write ahead log mode, so technically can handle writers in parallel, but that's only on the page level. So if two transactions affect different rows on the same block of data, the first will succeed and the second will fail. But Terso's Rust database gets around this by tracking row versions in memory, a feature inspired by Hecaton from Microsoft SQL Server. Let's see exactly how this works. Imagine three people make multiple updates to this data. Assuming the database commits are sequential, the first transaction succeeds without being blocked and the row gets a version with a begin and end value. The second transaction does the same because it's on a different row, but the third is where the MVCC engine really starts to shine because instead of overwriting the whole row, it just creates a new version of row one with a new begin and end value. So it's a bit like each row is a time machine keeping different versions of changes made to it but only temporarily because older versions eventually get garbage collected and only the latest versions remain. Because of this, Terso's database is much faster than SQLite when multiple threads are used and in certain cases can perform almost 200,000 writes per second. But as amazing as this is, there are a few drawbacks. For example, the current version of Terso's MVCC engine stores complete copies of the entire row, which can take up memory for tables with a lot of data that updates frequently. Another issue is row version management, which is handled by a read-write locked contiguous vector. So every writer has to wait its turn before writing a new version, which limits scaling writes on a multi-core machine. But remember, Terso's MVCC is still an experimental feature, not ready for production. And I'm sure the team are working hard on getting these difficult issues resolved. Anyway, I'm really excited to see where the team take this feature and where the whole Rust rewrite of SQLite will end up. Be sure to check out the full article for all the details. Again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.